process of painting brush outs on the outside of a house is a little bit laborious but one that I actually think is fun and it's so important. But the process of putting the swatches on site allows me to select the white, the white, the right white. By seeing it on site I made sure that the colour was perfect for this job. I'm loving watching each individual piece of stone be applied and that feature wall start to climb up. That new feature wall is of course important but possibly the most dramatic transformation to this facade is about to happen and that is the colour. Another great local trade find is the Snedden brothers. These two brothers and their team are well known up here on the central coast and they have come to help with the transformation of our home. They're gonna be dealing with the painting outside and in. They got straight into it and already I can see that colour being applied. Now the first step is to apply a primer and it's going to deal with all of the mortar joints giving a nice solid surface for the layers of colour to adhere to. Now this is only the primer but because it's white you can already see the effect. It's transforming our facade, it's freshening up the look. This house is going to be unrecognisable. I was a little sport for choice at Central Coast Tile and Stone. I knew that I wanted to include that natural stone feature wall because I saw it on so many homes in Palm Springs. But now as it's coming together, I'm elated that I chose the right one for this house. It's looking beautiful as it starts to creep up the wall. Combining this with the white paint, this home is definitely transforming. That ugly duckling is almost out of sight. It's such an exciting process. A little artisan like this fella. Look at this corner piece. A bit obscure, but look at what this is designed to do. It's allowing for the step that's going to be created. It's the perfect piece. How amazing. The frame for our new timber deck is being installed. This is going to sit directly behind the new landing for our entry foyer. That whole side of the house was completely underutilised. It was about four metres wide and we knew that we needed to make the most of that space. It was wasted real estate. We're working with the structural engineer specifications. There's new footings and timber posts have gone into those. As they come up out of the ground, a new timber frame is being constructed and that's sitting at the height that is level with the floor inside. This means once the deck goes on top, we're gonna to have a level surface to be able to walk from inside to out. This side deck is creating an additional outdoor destination. At the rear of the home, we already have the alfresco. That's the extension of the kitchen, dining and cooking. But this deck area is the extension of the living area, a place to relax and capture that beautiful morning sun. Another step towards our home transformation finally arrives. It's the brand new UPVC windows and doors from Integra. Interestingly for me, they arrive in separate pieces. The frames arrive and then the glass. The frames are so large, the boys can easily lift them into place because they're lightweight. Then they can include the glass panels. These are double glazed panels with argon gas in between. The combination of that frame and the glass is going to help greatly with our energy costs. And it's going to create that beautiful space to spend time in for all seasons. I can't wait to see these go into place. Paul and Mark have also been ensuring that each of the openings are easily accessible. It's allowing them to pull out each of the windows on the morning of the installation and then the new windows can be put straight into place. This means that we're not open to the elements. It's allowing a smooth transition from the old windows to the new ones. One of the biggest transformations for me is the addition of the new fixed panel and sliding door. Now it's actually replacing the size of two large windows, they're almost the same size but now we have a way to access through it to connect with that new deck. This is amazing. They're definitely a beautiful product and you can see by the smile on Sandro's face that he's definitely impressed. Stefan and his team are obviously very experienced at their job. It's great to watch them quietly and quickly install each of the new windows. Our tilers have installed most of the floor and wall tiles, just leaving a space for the new windows to be installed. Once the new windows and door have been put in place, the tilers will come back and then they'll finish off the tiling job around them to create a seamless join. And then our bathrooms are nearly complete, ready for the tapware. 
Now, I love all things about a house. I love every part of it, but I've got to say, for me, the kitchen is my most favorite room in the house. I love kitchens. I have designed thousands of them over the years. I put a lot of thought into this particular kitchen, but the problem for me, I want to put everything into this kitchen design. But of course, I only have a certain amount of space. I've got my appliances and I've pretty much narrowed in on the finishes. I've also nutted out the design and discussed this with Sandro, so I'm pretty comfortable with what I've got in mind. But I do believe in collaboration and I'm excited to meet with Jessica from Apollo Kitchens. She's been on site already, she has an understanding of what we're trying to do. And whilst I'm really happy with the layout and the finishes, I know that she has a great eye. She might be able to make my design even better. Jess, thanks for making time today. It's a little bit exciting, this whole job, because now it's not a display home, it's not for a client, it's, it's for your us. Home. That's right, yes. Um, I wanted wall appliances. I love wall ovens, right? Mm -hmm. The room is not big enough to then have my pantry and where was I going to put a pantry? So this had to become the pantry area here. Yep. Sink in the middle, of course, there because it looks out it's over to the window. window. Mm -hmm. The island's not massive. And I put that curve, not just because, you know, on trend, but it's also a magic traffic area. So you'd be familiar with these, these beautiful, yes. like the Steckerwood product. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to add that vertical detail as it sort of ribs around this way. Mm -hmm. Dishwasher has to go here next to the sink. I yes. need the plumbing. but. No, look, the design is functional. I can see you've laid everything out in the right areas where you've got sufficient storage, everything is going to work, two people can work in the kitchen without getting in the other person's way. Um, what colours were you...? So, this is our floor. Our walls are a crisp white, so I'm wanting to play with the green tones. I've got these in the colourways, but as far as the finish, I'm really in love with the Polytech Vanette because I want it to look beautiful but not to be high maintenance. We're sort this of in this family. This is more grey. I like it darker. darker. I think the dark will look really elegant. You're going to have skylights put in, and you've got the windows Correct. flashed back, so there's lots of light. And the French in. doors opposite. So well, we'll have to get Sandra's input, obviously. But I think the green, the timber. Yeah. It's going to look beautiful. It's going to come together really nice. So okay. you get the bench top. Yeah. In. Yes, and I think the brass along with a bit of the gold that comes through the bench top. Yeah, you can just really see really it good. on in yeah, here. It's gorgeous. Okay, so that's the kitchen. Yeah. Now tell me about the other joinery items that you'll need. So explain this to me because it looks like a laundry, but it looks like a bar. Is it? <laughs> What's happening here? Yeah, it's clever use of the space. Who does the cleaning in your household out of the two of you? Yeah, yeah probably Sandro. I'm not dirty, I'm just messy. <laughs> I've put the curve because I've replicated the curve from the kitchen, you see yep. them all. But, just hear me out, Yeah. have you thought about putting a bar fridge down here? <clears throat> I knew that you were going to say that. <laughs> it's something that we talked about. Happy what we're going to need to do next is get all of your appliance model numbers so yes. and then we'll be able to make those adjustments and fine tune the design. I'm super excited. Me too, I can't wait. When it came to selecting the internal colours for our homes, I actually have a Torben's fan deck that I use all the time. But I wanted to personalise the colours and I've been able to do that with the Colour Smith Reader. I have been scanning literally everything. I've scanned Converse shoes, a backpack, some books, cushion covers, a terracotta pot, even a frangipani flower. I've ordered some brush outs of these, they've arrived in the post. I've also got some sample pots to take on site. Now, whilst the house is basically white all the way through, we do have some feature walls. I want them to pop. We'll paint them on site, and that way we'll be 100% confident that we've picked the right colour. Another important detail in this project is going to be the light switches and power points. I've got a few different options to go to. I've gone with Clipsal because their range is quite uh, broad. I've got some metallic finishes which I use on some contemporary homes but I think it's a little bit too modern for this particular project. This particular design I really love with the timber surround. It could pick up the timber floors, slightly coastal. The internal colour scheme of our house is crisp white throughout, but we do have colours in the feature walls. I really love the iconic range, and whilst white is a simple go-to, I've decided to go with the black. I just love how it sits against all of the colours and still lets the colour be the feature instead of the light switch. Because they just simply click on and off, I can still include white if I want to, and I might do that in the bathrooms, I'm still deciding, but at least I've got options. The really exciting process for me with any renovation is to turn problems into possibilities. In the back of our house, the alfresco as it was never worked. It was small, 
angular and weird. We've got the sink in there now and we've got the frame for a new kitchen space. Paul and Mark have installed the cladding over the top of those holes where the window and the door were and to allow for that new splashback window to be put in where the kitchen's being positioned. As that cladding wraps around the back of the house, it's allowing the painters to continue transforming the home with colour as they work around every elevation of the home. I'm excited as I start to see that white texture of the brick and the cladding come to life, that textural element that I saw in so many homes in Palm Springs. Our feature stone wall, well it's gone about as high as it can. The building team have also been hard at work. They've installed the new fascia and the barge boards to the gable ends. And importantly, the safety rail has been installed. Stay tuned for the next episode of James Border House as our new roof finally arrives.